that uh, there was a so a different threat than what we saw yesterday. So the threat uh, today was uh, specific to a bomb being in the school. So as you can see, uh, a different, slightly different response than what we got yesterday. The students have been evacuated. So all the students and uh, staff are out of the school. And currently our, uh, our tactical unit along with uh, our bomb unit is going through the school. Just double checking to make sure that uh, it is safe at this point. I can say that we haven't seen anything uh, to indicate that it's a credible threat. However, we, as I said, mentioned yesterday, we take these things very seriously and uh, we're, we want to make sure that uh, there is no credible threat. What time did this call come in? Shortly after 11 o'clock, is my understanding. I don't have a precise time, but sometime between 11 and 11 o'clock. What, what happened as soon as that call came in? Uh, so as soon as the call came in, obviously there, there's a bit of a reaction. Um, we've got officers here on the scene. Actually, we had some officers here first thing this morning, um, just to follow up with staff and students and uh, reassure them that we were uh, monitoring it, uh, help them feel safe and help reintegrate into the school, uh, the school day. The officers had just left and a short time later we received that call. Um, and so obviously the same type of initial response until we sort out exactly what the details are of the call and, uh, and what has occurred. Just want to be clear, so yesterday it was two phone calls. Was this the same, the, the nature of the was the same, a phone call again? The, the nature, the way they received the call was the same. It's a phone call. It definitely appears similar in nature. I, I can't say at this point that definitively it is the exact same caller, but they certainly appear similar in nature at Can this you, stage. How, what, what makes you say similar? Is it the same number, same voice? Uh, same type of voice, uh, and it appears to be coming at this point from the same number. That's the preliminary information we have received. Oh, you, you got the phone number. How hard will it be to track down the person with that number? It depends on it depends on the nature of the phone number. So some of these numbers, as we've all experienced with uh, some of the global scams that go on, uh, a phone number can appear to come from one location, but in fact comes from another location. So it's about tracking those things back to the actual original source uh, of the phone call. How disruptive is all this to uh, the staff? Uh, I would say it's extremely disruptive to the staff and students. You've got a number of students, obviously, who just want to go to school and receive their education as they're entitled to. You've got a number of staff who just want to come to work and do their job. And we have our officers here um, who uh, have a, a number of other tasks that they could be performing, but we're drawing them all to this site. Um, and, and that prevents them from doing uh, a lot of their other regular duties. What do you say to the person who's, uh, who might think this is some kind of a joke? Or a... Well, it's certainly not a joke, uh, and certainly we don't uh, we don't take it with any sense of humor whatsoever. Um, we, as I mentioned yesterday, we will be invest investing some significant resources in tracking back uh, the person who made these calls um, and doing our best to uh, doing our best to lay charges uh, and see them through the court process. So it uh, it certainly um, is not a joke. Uh, there's no humor behind any of this. I think if you talk to any of the staff or students, they don't find it humorous at all, and we certainly don't find it humorous from a police perspective. Do you think things were maybe handled a little bit better today, being able to get all of the students out of the school rather than having uh, so many of them So again, a, a differing nature in terms of the threat, right? Uh, differing in terms of when we, and it's a different, it's a slightly different protocol that we use. Um, when we're concerned that the threat is uh, is inside the school and that it's not uh, it's not an active shooter type situation, um, the the response is is slightly different. So each one of these, it's difficult to compare any one to any other because the information is slightly different, the way we receive it is slightly different, and we have to handle each one of them on their own merits, and we make some decisions very very quickly. Um, in the initial outset is to how we're going to respond. And yesterday's threat obviously was to bring a gun to the school and harm the teachers and students, which is why students were locked in classrooms. It, it was, the threat was to bring a weapon to the school. What type of charges could someone be facing if you are able to uh, Sure, so uh, uttering threats to cause bodily harm or death, perhaps mischief, uh, perhaps public mischief. Uh, and again, we've got detectives working on that and we'll determine exactly what the right set of charges is to, to uh, bring a person to justice. Are you leaning towards like a young person or a student? I, I can't comment on that. I can't comment on that. 
What happens next? Police are still on scene combing through the school? So we're, we're on scene. We're going through the school. We're going to make sure that uh, we double check to make sure that uh, there is no validity to the threat. Um, obviously, the students have all departed school for the day, so I think school is very likely done for them for the day, but that's up to the school board ultimately to decide. Um, and then, again, we'll have officers uh, back at the school tomorrow, again, to re-insure staff, re-insure students. Can we just have your uh, name and spelling again? Yeah, it is Will Mason. I'm a superintendent with the Hamilton Police. Will Mason, W-I-L-L-M-A-S-O-N. To, for tomorrow, uh, I mean, two threats in two days. Uh, will there be a police presence at the school again, do you think? Yeah, we're going to have officers at the school, certainly. Uh, and, uh, and we're certainly looking into all aspects to try and prevent this from happening. And uh, we would say to anybody who is perpetrating these types of calls or thinking about perpetrating them, it's no laughing matter, certainly no joke. And uh, you're dealing with an impact on a, on a great uh, portion of the population. Now, I talked to a couple of girls who were locked in yesterday, were able to evacuate the day, but they had just finished talking to their some other students and teachers about the, the mental stress and, and the, uh, the anguish that was, was felt yesterday. Uh, how much of a toll do this take on these kids? I Well, as I said yesterday, and we're, and we're very sensitive to that, uh, many of the officers have, have uh, children of their own who are students. Some have students who go to that school. Um, so definitely we recognize that it is stressful for them. It's a traumatic event, and it's not something that they're used to dealing with. The school brought in crisis counselors yesterday, and I'm sure they'll be doing much the same to help some of the students who are having difficulty working through those issues, help them, give them some coping strategies to work through. I do have to cut it short there. I'm still running the call, so I apologize. i got to step away, but we'll provide an update later. Just one final question. How likely is it, you know, having two calls in two days? Can you remember any instances like this where... I can't this recall. A, I okay. can't recall a similar incident where we've had two calls in two days to the exact same location. Okay, thank you. Yep. I got the thank you. Off. Yeah. Right, no. Before I drive away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was Bishop Ryan uh, subject to this last year? So.